Crucible, uh, and our aluminum Hanya mask is actually already been debound in this. So we're going to save some steps, uh, and it's rested. Okay, I got the crucible out. As you can see, I am cooling down the microwave over there. Um, we are going to leave the top on the crucible so that we don't disrupt any sort of uh, post-centering that would occur from uh, just letting it cool down to ambient. I, I did increase the times from the live that I had just done. Uh, we've actually been centering here for about 80 minutes, uh, swapping between the 1100 watt and the 900 watt. The reason I'm doing that is, well, this uh, element can't actually reach higher than the temperature needed for our purposes of aluminum. So uh, I just wanted to go ahead and give it a full send and uh, see how we do. Okay, so we have finished the center cycle and, well, I'm not quite sure how it's going to go. Uh, we extended the time, like I said previously, uh, from an estimated 45 minutes to about 80 minutes. What we have over here um, is a fan. You probably, great, you can't see it because uh, it's, it's being blocked. But we're cooling off the microwave and it's completely done using these portable fans. You can turn that off now uh, to cool those off because you don't want them overheating while you are doing the centering. The crucible itself is actually still quite very warm and I'm going to go ahead and get a close up of that. I've got my tongs here and uh, we're going to go ahead and set those over there. So let's see what we got. I'm going to go ahead and remove the heating element. Oh, it's quite stuck. That's actually a pretty good sign. Um, why it's a pretty good sign? Well, uh, whenever there is a large caking of material around the aluminum part, it seems to produce better results. So let's see what the temperature is of this. Everything's within reasonable temperatures. I'm actually just going to go ahead and remove this with my gloves. Interesting. So look at that. Pretty neat. I'm going to go ahead and put this over here, over in a safe spot. So let's try to excavate this and uh, get it removed somehow. I'm going to tap it off. Okay. Well, we broke our element. Things aren't looking good for me. This is the second time apparently this week that we've done this. Well, despite the absolute failure of my heating element, we seem to have somewhat decent results, at least preliminary for our mask. Uh, so the yellow coloring, that's a good sign. We've been excavating. Uh, that's the outside of the mask. It seems to be holding up. It sounds metallic. I don't want to hold my breath uh, because, you know, I've, I've been here before where this just totally fails. But to me, uh, maybe there's some promise here. Uh, we'll see in just a few minutes. This shell has uh, been a challenge to take off, uh, but notice the coloration here. We're going to try to uh, clean this up a little bit further. That's pretty interesting. You see that metal? Huh. I can start to see the shape take form. I've broken off a few very metallic pieces and this feels very metal. Let's keep going. Wow. 
It's really coming through. I think I did it. I mean, it was just a guess that I would only take three tries, but that was a pretty, pretty good guess. Three D printed aluminum Hanya mask, just straight out of the microwaves. This is metal. Cool. Okay, so I have cleaned this up just a little bit and what do we have? A almost undamaged Hanya mask. There are a few pieces around the nose that didn't quite center or debind properly. Uh, uh, it's placed like this in the crucible and when I put the element it could have cracked just then. Because other places like um, the teeth and around the the eyes that held up very well uh, even the horns which in the past were challenging uh, they seem to stick so what does it sound like well it it feels solid and it taps solid and it makes very satisfying clinking noises when you drop it on the table. Hello. So it really did take three lessons to get this right. That was just a hunch, but now I don't have to go back and edit the YouTube titles. I'd still consider this process pretty experimental. I mean, it's just now that I've been able to get a pretty repeatable mask here, but there's still plenty of work that needs to be done mostly around benchmarking how strong these parts actually are. I don't have a tinsel test rig, but I would like to get some strength tests down the road. It feels strong, but that's not really good enough to know if your part can be functional or not. So in summary, I think I'd just like to give the highlights of what we learned. The temperatures needed are a good bit higher than what some literature out there says, and that could be because they generally do that in an atmosphere and under vacuum, um, or it could be just the different type of aluminum that we're using here. Uh, the other thing that we learned is that um, without the zinc putty and without the flux, this doesn't really seem to work. Also, while doing this challenge, I've learned quite a bit about producing the elements and the crucibles for this project. The microwaves themselves are quite large, so large crucibles work very well. However, they take a little bit longer to heat up and they don't hold temperature as much. So a smaller compact crucible, well, that might actually be the ticket for some of the more exotic materials or even some of the different steels and perhaps titanium, which is on the list. Along a similar note, uh, the elements that I've made, well, they're sort of tuned to the material. So I have one debinding element, and now I have an aluminum element. Well, I used to until I dropped it, so I'm actually printing another one and I'll be producing it with uh, a few slight modifications to hopefully make it hold up a little longer. So if you like the content and find what I do a little interesting, maybe hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and as always, cheers.